if everybody could start making their way to their seats. Just want to share something from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy is a chapter where Moses was with the children of Israel 40 days before they were to enter into the promised land. And he spent that 40 days reminding them of the things they needed to do. He reminded them of the Ten Commandments. But most of all, he reminded them of the covenant. And the covenant from God is, if you will, I will. 21 days we fasted and we prayed and we had covenant with God. And God wants to return the favor. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their iniquity and I will heal their land. Do we need healing in this land? I'm going to read one more scripture. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's talking about the restoration of Israel. Who in here would like some things in your life to be restored? The enemy has stolen from you and you want restoration. Who wants restoration? I know I do. Deuteronomy 3 verse or 30 verse 2 says, when you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today, then the Lord your God will restore. Today, let's renew that covenant that we started at the very beginning of January and let's take it to that next level and understand that God is not done pouring out miracles. There are angels positioned in every corner of this place and today is a day of miracles. Rise up. Rise up, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Rise up and let's go to the Lord in prayer right now and claim that restoration. Claim what God is going to give to every single person who will make that covenant with him. Jesus, we come before you, Lord, and we pray right now for restoration. We pray right now, Lord God, that you would give us the strength to commit and to make sure, Lord God, that we make you number one in our lives. We pray right now that you would make us ready to live that life of covenant so that you, oh God Almighty, can perform the miracles that you want to perform in our lives right now. And we release the angels in this place and pray, oh God, that your anointing would be upon each and every one of us as we worship and praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
what you've done for me. I want you to shout if you have a voice. Come on. I want you to think back where he brought you out of. The sin you were in and where you're at today. We're not putting on a show today. This is a time of worship. We're going to sing that again and we're all going to participate in worship. How many will say amen? This time when you sing, we're going to worship with you. Everyone shake your hands up. Come on. Come on. Get it all out of your system. Yeah, it snowed. Who cares? We're in the house of God. We made it. Let there be liberty in the house of God. The wonderful name. The only name of Jesus. The wonderful name of Jesus. The wonderful name.
Let's give the Lord praise right now. Let's give the Lord praise right now. Come on. From the front to the back, let's give him praise. I'm a child of God. I've been purchased by his blood. I thank you, God, for your goodness and your 
Let there be a shout in this place right now when I think about where he's brought me from, when I think about the goodness. Oh, let there be a shout with the voice of triumph right now. If you've been purchased by his blood. may return to your seat if you just remain standing, turning to the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Before I go to this, let me thank you for responding in worship. I want you to identify what just happened in this place. Don't ever miss those worship moments because God just did a work all across this place. And if you're waiting for the altar call for God to do the work in your life, you're gonna miss a lot. You're gonna miss a lot. To our guests who are here, we welcome you to the sanctuary. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> Sister Mitchell, happy birthday. We love you. We're so glad to have you in the house of God. To the fielders who are with us, a special guest, we welcome you, we honor you. Amen. I was going into a weekend and I was so glad because I, it's very rare I go into a Saturday and my message is all ready and I was just doing great. And then I was at the church yesterday, it was playing my saxophone and uh, trying to get the rust off it because it's really rusty. And I was just kind of meditating, thanking God for just a beautiful day. And a family came in and they they came into prayer around two o'clock yesterday. And I thought, you know what, I think I'm just going to go in and pray and ask God to, to help us with our service yesterday or today. And that was a mistake. <laughs> but it wasn't a mistake. Because the message that I was going to speak today, God said, nope. Now, I don't always like that. If there's any pastors or preachers here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, it's 2 o'clock on a Saturday. It's getting ready to snow. I'm about ready to consume more carbs than you've ever seen in my entire life. Sitting by the fireplace in the lounge chair, Brother Senior, God says, that's not it. This is where I want you to go. So for our guests, if this is not the most polished message, I do not apologize because it's more important that I'm spirit-led than led by my flesh. <laughs> Brother Senior, it is so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Joshua 24. Verse 1, I'm going to be reading in the NIV. In this portion of Scripture, Joshua is giving his final address to the leaders of the people before he died. He died at 110. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Verse 14, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Throw away all those false gods. You need to serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day to serve the Lord. Today I want to preach to you on this thought. So to those dads, I'm so follow. We would find out that we would be having a little girl. This was way before the tradition of launching an atomic bomb in the backyard to let the world know what the gender is. I mean, people lose their eyes and body parts figuring out what kind of child this is. And soon, the perfect baby would be born, a little girl who loves Starbucks. And thank God that now equates to me getting a Starbucks discount now that she works there. Thank you, Avery. I appreciate that very much. Here's a picture of my little girl. I know. And she's just that pretty today. Now she's in college. Jace is in middle school. Where has the time gone? 
You would think by now, Isaiah, I would be a perfect dad. I mean, I've had 20 years of practice now, and yet, if I'm real and transparent with you, I still find myself needing to find an altar to seek the help from above. Why? Because I'm human, I'm a man, I'm flesh. I have struggles, I have insecurities, I have times when I let stress get to me. Delta. I have times in which I'm not the example I should be. I have times when I'm distracted. I have times when I'm selfish. I have times when I'm lazy. And I'm your pastor. But before you get too harsh with me, look in the mirror, man. Reminds me of Romans 7, 19. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, that's what I keep on doing. Yes, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? It's weak. But I thank God for his mercy and grace that is new every morning. He does not expect perfection. He only expects complete reliance on him. Do I need to remind you Ephesians 2 and 8? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. We are afraid to talk about grace because we're afraid that that will negate holiness. You need grace and holiness. But unfortunately, sometimes... We focus only on a holiness and not grace, and we have folks trying every single day to measure up to God, which you will never do. You don't deserve to be here today. I don't deserve to be here, but thank God I'm in his house one more time. Thank God for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness that allows me one more day. Can you clap to the Lord right now? He is the one who gives us strength to stand against sin. He is the one who gives us strength to tr for allow us to teach truth to our children. He gives us the strength to follow the spirit instead of the flesh. Parents, I'm here to remind you that if you are not led by the spirit, you cannot lead a spirit-led home. Carnally minded parents will lead a carnally minded home. When all of a sudden you can watch something and there's four letter words and there's all kinds of profanity, it doesn't bother you and all of a sudden it doesn't bother your kids and they're watching even more. Did I tell you the devil doesn't like what I'm about to preach today? Can I tell you? There is something you've got to choose. You've got to draw a line in the sand. Where is my house standing? As for me and my house, I'm going to throw away any idols. I'm going to serve the Lord and him alone. Without the Spirit... We will lead our families down the wrong path. We'll crave the wrong things. We'll be put to sleep by the agenda of this world. And we'll neglect the most important obligation that we have. The obligation to our families. To all the fathers who are here, I want you to admit it and stand up. All the fathers, please stand. All the fathers. If you've ever been a father, remain standing for just a moment. I'm going to remind you as your pastor and those who are guests, you are called to be the spiritual leader of your home, the priest of your home, the example for your children to follow, the protector of the faith, the first line of offense. And if the enemy comes in and finds you weak and worn out and tired and frustrated and gets past you, he will go to your children and destroy them. But today there's a man who's going to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, man, help me preach right now. You may be seated. 
But know this, you will be tested. In a world where sin is right and righteousness is laughed at, you will be tested. What will you do when the test comes? Will you have a spiritual backbone or cave to the pressure of the popular opinion? I need a father who will stand up for righteousness. I need someone who will stand up for prayer. I need a father who will stand up for holiness. No matter what this world does, if we don't stand for it, nobody will. It doesn't matter what culture says. It doesn't matter what's popular. It doesn't matter what's comfortable. It doesn't matter what my flesh wants. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here lies the problem. Many of us are confused as to what it looks like to be a winning dad. Surely we've got to have a big house and a big car and a big bank account. Is that what success really looks like? It is no secret that I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. Let's not get the Cubs and Cardinals dispute into this sermon. One of those players is Jim Edmonds. I follow Jim Edmonds, and I have a picture of him here. He is a legend in St. Louis. Greg, can I get an amen? So good, in fact, that he's in the Hall of Fame. Next picture, you see him in the red jacket. That's a big deal for the Cardinals. He's a broadcaster, and he does an excellent job. On top of that, look at his family. I mean, he's got a wonderful family. Imagine having fame and fortune and a beautiful family. Surely, this is what success looks like. But remember this. Those glossy pictures on social media don't tell the whole story. You know those ones that you're jealous about because you couldn't be at Disney? They're not even happy at Disney. (laughs) Dad's stressed about money. Mom's stressed about the kids being fussy. It's way too hot and humid of all places in Orlando. Why would you put a theme park there? I mean, Starbucks costs $10. I mean, you spent so much money, you're going to be in debt for three years. You think you're going to be happy? Smile, and then, ah! (laughs) And you're sitting at home, oh, honey, could we just go there? Be careful whose pictures you're looking at and being jealous about because you don't know the story behind the picture. (laughs) That was the case for this picture right here. You see, while he was taking care of what he thought was most important, fame, fortune, and career, he forgot to handle his heart, Anu. And his heart was led astray by sin that destroyed his marriage. In a social media post, his wife said these tragic words. I don't care about this massive house. I don't care about my new car. I don't care about my diamonds. What does any of that mean when I can't have the most basic How about you being famous to God and in your own home? That is what success looks like. Let's focus on having a life of integrity. Focus on being led of God. Focus on prayer and the word. Let's focus on what matters most. John Franz, I saw you. Come up here with your children. Come on. Come on, bring them down here. Today, we dedicated nine precious children to Jesus. And I would love to tell you, parents, that this was the hardest part of raising your child. I mean, you had to walk to the front with your child, and you had to stand there and let us pray. That's the hardest part. And from here, they're just anointed children of God. I mean, they'll have angelic voices. They'll get up to speak, and it'll be natural. That's not the truth. Let me tell you what success looks like. Now, I don't mind calling you out. What success looks like is what I saw a few minutes ago. You kneeling at the altar, holding your children, showing them what it's like to worship and give your all. That is what success looks like. That is what it's all about to be a father. Children, you have the greatest gift standing right there and a godly father. I can hear the excuse already, but my dad didn't do that. I can hear it already. My dad was an alcoholic. Well, do you want to change that? Well, 
You know, because my past was so bad, you should just be thankful that I'm in the house of God. Just okay is not okay. Coming to the house of God and be a passive, barely worshiping father who doesn't know how to teach a bot. No, that's not okay. God has called you to lead your family and others. Is there a man who would say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here is the problem. We want to go on our feelings, what feels right. Now, I'm about ready to be real honest with you. How many, with it snowy outside, nice and chilly, this, how many felt like getting out of bed this morning? There's one child back there who got up to play video games. Is that Larkin? Thank you, Larkin. I better have a picture after church for that uh, decision right there. I mean, we all would have loved to just had pancakes and stayed at home, and I think I'll just watch it online, you know, because I'm so concerned about COVID. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Europe next week, but I'm concerned about COVID, so I'm not coming to the house of God. If COVID is your excuse for becoming slothful spiritually, ah. Uh, a pandemic can't slow you down spiritually. A man of God only gets stronger through a pandemic. Why? You're a child of God. You hear from God. You have a direct connection with heaven, and God gets you through. That's why. You're the priest of your home. It was the priest who spoke to God on behalf of the people. It was the priest who presented a sacrifice unto God. It was a priest who was a mediator between God and men. And fast forward to today, what does that mean? Dads, it means you bring your family to the altar and say, this is my family. I need you to help me. I need you to guide me. I cannot do this on my own. I must have you. Before I go any further, all the single moms who are here and there's no father here, I salute you in the name of Jesus for leading your family. Don't you dare believe the lie that you can't raise them in truth and that they're going to be messed up because dad was all messed up. No, you keep bringing them to the house of God. You don't understand. It's been in my family for a very long time. I get that. I understand my dad hasn't darkened the door of a church in many years now. Probably 10 years. Made fun of me for becoming a pastor. Has no relationship to me. Doesn't even know the names of my children. Don't give me some sad story about how bad it is for you. You got to make a decision up for yourself. This is a personal decision. Get a backbone and stand up and say, I'm a child of God. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. I'm standing here and I'm warring against hell, whatever it takes. Careful. I'm about ready to ruffle. You ready? Tell me you're ready. Are you sure you're ready? It bothers me when I see fathers who attend church and religious activities but refuse to lead their home spiritually. It is not your wife's responsibility to be the only worshiper. You cannot live carnally and expect your kids to grow up as spiritual leaders. You can't make church your last priority and then expect to be their first priority. What are you going to choose today? Abraham and Lot at a crossroad. That's exactly where some of us are today. What will you choose? Lot knew the land in which he was going. He knew they were wicked. But there was prosperity. And that's what he chose. Dear God, what are you choosing today? I would rather you be a godly pauper than a rich man who loses his soul. How are you leading your family? 
Brother Jared, there's a guy in Kansas City who looks just like you. His name is Jason Huckabee. I mean, he looks a lot like you. Remember him telling a story that I've never forgotten. His, where's Henry at? He's back there in the playground right now. Let's say Henry's active, right? Kids that age are active. And I remember Jason Huckabee talked about he was having a hard time praying because every time he went to pray and kneel, they thought it was a jungle gym. I'm sh not, not Henry, but he said, this is what I decided. If they're going to have a jungle gym, they're going to have a praying jungle gym. They want to know, what, what, why is there a tear coming down his face? What, what is dad doing? Why is, who's he calling out to? You know what he was teaching his kids? This will be a house of prayer. That's what this will look like. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Pastor, why are you being so hard on us men? Can't the children's ministry and the youth ministry take care of our kids? The children's ministry and the youth ministry have not been called to raise your kids. That is your calling. Brother and Sister Vales, would you please stand? Brother and Sister Sizemore, would you please stand? Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for everything you do. You know what they're not going to do? They're not going to call you and say, what is your son streaming tonight? They're, they're, they're not going to call you up and say, are you really going to let your daughter go out looking that way? Does that still matter? Do we still believe in holiness and separation? It does matter. They can't go into your home. So what you got to do, you've got to lead your home every single day. An example for them to follow. Exactly what these young parents you just agreed to. We will preach, we will teach, we'll do what we can as a congregation. But where they're going to learn the most is right in your living room, in your home. How you act, what you watch, what you do. As for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. And I close with this scripture in my last slide. In Matthew 7, 13, if you'll all stand. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to the destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. If you've ever taught Search for Truth, you've seen this slide, which has haunted me for many years. If you look really close at the bottom, it's from the 70s, I'm sure, but you'll see a sign that says, To Broadway. It's a wide path heading to the Lake of Flames. And then there is a road that's narrow heading to heaven but perhaps what troubles me the most is about a third of the way down that cross you see someone holding to a child and that child turning around no one ever pointed that out to me but I wonder what happened ironically enough I don't see a father there Where's he at? Surely he was there somewhere. And I ask you this question today. When entertainment calls your kids, what will you do? When worldliness calls their name, what will you do? If God forbid they got sick, with an illness and you were home alone would you even know how to pray for them
have a book club for women. Get 75 to 100 women. Book club for men, we have 15 guys. Where are we at, guys? You expecting just a few ministers of the church to lead your family? That stops right here, and that stops right now. Because right at this moment, I need some fathers to step to this altar. And I want you to say in your spirit, as for me and my house. I want some single moms. I want you to come to this. I want some young people who aren't going to tell your parents what you want that's so worldly and, and force them to make a decision whether they make you happy or whether they speak truth. An altar of repentance where we say, God, today I choose you. I throw away false gods. I cry out to you as for me and my house. Oh God, don't let them be lost. Don't let my daughter be lost. Don't let my son be lost. God, I want to go to heaven with them. Jesus, help me. I cannot do this on my own. I reach up to you. Where's the man who stands up against unrighteousness? Where is the man who prays when no one else is praying? Where is that one who stands against sin? Where is the prayer warrior? Where is that man? As for me and my house, I will serve. I will serve the Lord. I am no Hear the voice of the Lord. Don't leave this place cold hearted. Don't leave this place untouchable. Let him speak to you.
your children are here right now, I want you to find your family. I want my family to join me right now. Becca, Avery, and Jace, will you please join me? the same page my greatest success in this world in this life will not be how many members of our church or what I live in or what I drive this is my greatest hey Brian and Jace to see you worship As for me and my house, let's pray for each other. Jesus, I give my family to you. Let them always have a love for truth. Let them always love to be in your presence. Oh God, so many times I fail as a father, God. But I ask you, God, to pick me up in those moments, God. Let them see your presence shine through me. Help us, God. We cannot do this on our own. Our flesh is weak, but you are strong. We humble ourselves before you. I give you my family. I trust you. They're in your hands, almighty God. Let my home be filled with peace and joy and thanksgiving. Let me lead by example, Almighty God. I give myself to you. Come on, lay your hands on your children right now. Come on, let's pray for our children in the name of Jesus right now. Lay your hands on them and plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. something happening right here. We're going to stay here at this moment for just a moment. Come on, families. I can't have complacency in my home. I can't allow sin into my house. God, there's some things that we need to change. Do it in my life. Bring conviction to all of us, Lord. We need you.
Let's respond. Let's respond. atmosphere for baptism what a perfect atmosphere for two children to be baptized in Jesus name a heritage parents who are saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord on the profession of your faith and your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ having already received the promise of the Holy Ghost I now baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins in Jesus name <laughs> thank you Jesus Lord we worship you. we thank you Lord God you are so heritage will live on. What you trained me to do, I'm passing on to my children. Thank you for being here today. I love you. Thank you for what you instilled in me. And Sophia, upon the profession of your faith, baby, in 
your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, having already received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I now baptize you into the body of Christ for the remission of your sin. In Jesus' name. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Let's celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. There's a new name written down in glory. <laughs> Brother Rose, I want you to come right now. I want you to know how much I admire your walk with Jesus Christ. He's going to close with prayer in just a second, but let me get real. Man, we can't afford to have emotions without something to go with it this week. Each one of you need a spiritual mentor in your life. I can give you one if you need names. Some of you need to go home clean house a little bit change some habits how do I know I've been in prayer my spirit's grieved but you can only do that through the help of Jesus Christ if you try to do it on your own it'd be disaster the rose will you close us in prayer and ask us as we lead our families and for everyone else as we leave dear God we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your mercy, oh God. Now I pray, God, that you go with us, Lord, this week, God, that the Holy Ghost, oh God, would fire us up, oh God. It would, it would get us to the point, Lord, where there would be repentance, oh God, that you would lead us to the altar, oh God. Lead us to our knees, oh God, where we can give up to you, oh God, the things, oh God, that are not right, Lord, but that you, oh God, know, Lord. You know what we need, oh God, before we ask it, before we think it, oh God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that the enemy, oh God, be defeated this week, oh God. That we, as men, oh God, as fathers, oh God, would come into this house and pray, oh God. That we would pray at home, oh God. That we would get rid of some of the things, oh God, that we need to get rid of this week, oh God. That there would be conviction, oh God, come upon our hearts, oh God. But that we would lift up your name, oh God. We would lift up our hands towards heaven, oh God. And we would ask forgiveness, Lord, that you, oh God, would forgive us, oh God. That you would give us the strength we need, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. That you will make a way for us, oh God, this week, God. And that we would turn over, oh God, a new leaf, oh God. And we would turn a about face, oh God, towards you, Lord. And I pray it in Jesus' name, oh God. Let there be victory in the house today, oh God. Let there be victory in our homes, oh God. Let us believe in, oh God, today. Don't let us stay the same, but let us be changed by the power of your spirit, I pray, God, in Jesus' name. And we thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. We thank you for the victory today. We thank you, oh God, for the future in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed. Continue playing. I like that. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Greet all of our guests.